So it's a new chapter. For those of us who really didn't hook them in the open house, this is kind of a last ditch effort for us. So this is the way you catch them before they leave, just after they've explored the house a little bit. We've probably all experienced a little bit of this where they, they come through, they don't want to give us their contact information. They think we suck. I don't, I don't want to talk to you. But then after they've seen the house, they're like, all right, well, now I've seen the house. I'm free to tell you. Like, I'm not going to buy it. So eh, guards down. I don't care. Awesome. Now we can have a real conversation, a meaningful conversation, get to know each other a little bit. Right. So the point is to connect their needs and start leading them into setting an appointment. Right. The contact info they gave you may have been bogus at the beginning, but now's your chance to get accurate info at the end. Since you have something that they now need, you can actually get that contact. So like, Oh, all right. Well, you know, clearly you didn't give me the contact info at the beginning, but now that we've talked a little bit and I realize that you really are looking for something and it's just super weird and you're tired of explaining yourself over and over again. Now let's talk about how we can get that for you, right? Some of the things that we can do is, hey, before you go, what's some advice we can give that you would give the seller on this property, right? Just yeah, you know, before you go. And everything is that before you go. So, hey, what'd you think of the house before you go? You can like in all this with before you go, right? So what's the ideal house look like before you go, right? Trying to figure out what they want. So if I could get that combination of things for you in the next two weeks, would you buy it or would you want to see it before you go? Okay, <laughs> right? The email I have for you, the number I have for you, this is the greatest one, right? So they gave you bullshit contact information at the beginning. Awesome. Now they've had a chance to see the house. You grab your clipboard. You're like, ah, blah, 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 blah. You're looking for this house, that house. So your, your uh, contact information is, and just look at them because they know they can't repeat what they just wrote down on that board. They're going to be like, uh, you know what? Let me give you my better one. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, this is your work one, right? Okay, got it. So, and your number is? Uh-huh. Okay. This is not the same number. Oh, okay, different. Oh, you, you put in, you scribbled it wrong. Okay, I'm having a hard time reading this or whatever it is, right? You confirm that contact information with them face-to-face -face, and that's how you get the real stuff, right? Or it just might be that they really do want to give you good contact information, in which case you can say, you know what? You don't bring the clipboard with, with you. And you're like, oh, okay, blah, blah, blah. This is the house you need. Tell you what, hey, give me a card. All right, cool. I don't have any cards. I'm going to just go ahead and send it to you. What's the number? Does everybody have a digital card or like even a picture of your email signature that you can mail people? Awesome. Best grift ever. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and send this to you. Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? Let me resend it. Did you get it? I'm listening for the ding. I want to hear the buzz. Like maybe I put the number in wrong, right? Put the <laughs> screws to them. Like, no, you're not getting out of this until you give me some real contact information. You've already lost them. You know, when they walked in the front door and they were like, hey, pack sand, like, all right, well, I got nothing to lose here right? Put the screws to them before you go, right? At the end of the day, that's all that matters. I've also heard, rather than looking at them right before, just like stare down at your page. Mm -hmm. like you Awkward. <laughs> Awkward. There. Yeah. That's like the Adrian strategy. So like, I'm going to sign it. <laughs> I don't hear you signing. Oh, does the pen not work? Here you go. All right. Something else that's good, like we were talking about before, how to inoculate these people against other agents. You've performed. You've curated the tour of the home. You've had the opportunity to show them, I know all about real estate. I know how to sell homes. I know about my product. I know what I'm doing. But I don't want you to go out and talk to somebody else and get hoodooed into the whole sales funnel that everybody else is putting out there. So this is a great opportunity to tell them, like, hey, this is your first open house. Awesome. Here's what to expect with the rest of them, because they're not all going to be this good. Here's why. Let me be your bodyguard, okay? You don't want to go tell your life story every single time you go to a new open house, do you? Nah, no one wants to do that. I mean, you've told me everything. Thank you so much. I've got it downloaded. Like, I feel like we're soulmates at this point, right? Don't talk to the other agents. You don't have to do that. Tell you what, here's my card. Oh, you didn't have any cards. Oh, I magically appeared. So here's my card. Next time you go to an open house, just walk in the door and instead of signing in, just hand them that card. And if they ask, who this guy is, say, ah, oh, we've been lifelong partners. I've worked with this guy for 20 years. He's amazing. This is my agent Call him. Immediately, they're just going to be like, all right, you can pass. It's like golden access pass, right? The best way, best way to keep agents away is to go ahead and hire one because they're not going to compete for your business. Why? Because it pushes them all the way down to the bottom of the priority list. 
Um, call my agent, number one team in San Diego, been serving our community for 20 years are all good taglines you can give them with your cards to tell the agent so that they don't try to push past that and get your contact information. So you wanna lock that lead in place. All right. Maybe they aren't quite sold on you, but you still wanna work with them and you still wanna put a protective barrier on them so they don't go talk to other people at the open house. So these are five great questions you can arm them with to totally sabotage any other agents that they're gonna to talk to after you. So, hey guys, I'm gonna give you these five questions, okay? One, next time you talk to an agent, ask them about their VIP buyer program. What's that? Just ask them, see if they've got one. Oh, by the way, here's ours. Would you like to learn more? Okay, great, maybe not. Ask them what they specialize in. If the answer is anything other than something super specific, they're completely full of shit and they don't sell real estate. If they're like, oh, well, I do a little bit of everything. No, you don't. There's no way that you specialize in downtown condos and luxury coastal and first time home buyers and veterans and Eastern rural. No chance. Which one is it? If they can't tell you what it is, blow by them. Tell me about your team or brokerage. If they don't have anything good to say or anything meaningful, then you know, that's probably not somebody you want to deal with. Oh, by the way, we're the number one team in San Diego for seven years. Just so you know, just saying, you know, so you can compare apples to apples. Ask them what their track record is. If I looked you up online, how many reviews would I find? Oh, none? Yeah, maybe keep moving. Why should I trust you? What's the one thing you can offer me that nobody else can? These five questions will decimate our opponents. Make sure you have answers to them. No. Whew, I sure hope you do. All right. So maybe they have an agent, but your spider senses tell you that they're still up for grabs. Before we start talking about how great we are, right? And this is an easy trap we fall into. Oh, but we offer this, but we offer that, right? We need to test their loyalty and measure their experience with the other agents, right? So they walk in without an agent. Oh, I have an agent. Where are they? Oh, they're busy. Oh, they're on vacation. Oh, they don't have a team. They don't have like showing agents and assistants, like hired professionals at their office to make sure that you're protected from guys like me. Interesting. Okay. What's their name? Maybe I know. There's 30,000 real estate agents in San Diego. It's about 7,000 of us that do one deal a year or more. About, about half of that are full-time agents. So yeah, like I probably know most of the 3,500 out there that are doing business. Who is it? Uh, Tom. Tom who? Oh, you just probably got to know this person, right? Hey, no worries. Like a lot of people, you know, they get referred to the first, per first person that they meet, right? So you want to test the relationship, set them up for an interview. Well, it sounds like you have just kind of loosely connected with this person. Maybe you're still open to interviewing the best person for the job. I'd love to interview. I got all the questions you can ask me right here. Let's do it, <laughs> right? They don't think it's important to walk you through homes that you're about to buy. That's kind of a cardinal sin in our company. We want to make sure that anything that you have an interest in, we're there to curate that experience for you. You don't think that's important? Okay. How was your home buyer consultation? What did they say about X, Y, Z? Open-ended question. What's the number one reason you chose to work with them? Most people don't choose to work with them. They let the choice be given to them. It's the first person they got introduced to and they said, okay, let's go do this without really thinking it through. We're exposing that, but we're doing it in a nice way, right? How many agents did you interview before you settled on this person? Oh, you didn't interview anybody. Hmm, interesting. You're about to buy a million dollar home. You didn't interview them? <laughs> Bold. I like to gamble too. All right, follow through before they leave. So you want to take it to the end zone. We want appointments that show up. So you need to set the follow on appointment, double check all their contact information, remind them over and over again what the next steps are because if you set the appointment and they forget why they're going to the appointment, chances are they're more likely to not show up to the appointment or reschedule on you. You have to make it very clear and super, super important. Take notes on all the guests, their appearance, how many people came, what you guys talked about, what they remarked about the property, what was very specific and particular about them that no one else would know that didn't have that intimate conversation with them that you did. So the whole time you're talking to them, notepads out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Before you go, you know, boom, I talked to 10 people and I got all this data off of them. I know exactly in my mind who Tom and Sally and Jean are. They're right here. And you're going to use that when you follow up with them so that they know that you know who they are. They're not just some random person that you're calling. Okay.